Green in your webs, it's Tricky K. Welcome for some more Pokemon XG Next Gen. This episode is gonna be a little different. I've been doing some grinding in Pirate Coliseum, which, depending on how I feel, assuming I don't put it in the filler episode, I think our team. I don't think we're quite ready to progress the plot, but we were doing so well in Pirate Coliseum, I kinda wanna do the next step. Because, for. I always get confused what levels everything is at, and for some reason I thought Pirate Calcium battles would be stronger, but they were like more in like the level 25, and we're pretty well above that at this point, so I want to give it a sh shot and see if we can actually handle Regum Tower, because Fanic is no longer in business. Right, right, right. You have to go up here. Oh. Oh. And I did a whole intro on everything. Come on, I'm not live commenting more battle bingo. Well, I guess we can have a live commentary intro for a filler episode after all. <laughs> so, welcome back for some more Pokemon XG Next Gen. Don't mind me while I buy the Thunderbolt TM. That will come into play later, if you haven't already seen it in action yet. Um, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure when this is going to be uploaded yet, because it's a mixture of footage I've done after completing the third area of Mount Battle, and the fourth area of Mount Battle. So since there's no major plot progression being made, and there isn't exactly anything too critical happening in this video, so, first off, this was recorded way after the rest of the video, but I figured I'd throw this in now, because later on in my post-commentary, oh, this is going to be full of space-time conditions, by the way. I say that I don't get anything valuable, especially not TMs in this video, so I'm going to just throw this clip in particular in front, because I only just stumbled upon this TM while trying to figure out how to progress the plot. But I'll save that story for later. Onwards with the rest of the video. It's not completely just running to Poke Spots and checking for wild Pokemon, though I will admit that is the majority of this video. I was gonna put in the Pyrite Coliseum battles in as well, but that's pretty much long enough to be its own segment, especially because I think that this will be in the last original Mount or Pyrite Coliseum battles. It's going to start looping after that, so I figured that it's worth saving for his own quote-unquote filler video. There is something exciting that happens near the end of the video, so I did want to at least show all my findings in the process. Granted, that is a pretty exciting find in and of itself, but believe it or not, it's not the most exciting thing that happens in this. Trust me. So, if you ever wanted to use a Porygon in an array game, well, you're in luck. This is probably a perfect opportunity to use it. Um, game? Game? So, today I learned that the encounters are fixed from the moment that they pop up on the radar. Because I do believe I saved after I got this notification that there was a Pokemon at the Poke Spot. And it was still Porygon 2. Thank goodness. I will admit that's the first time I ever had the game freeze up on me uh, in that sort of faction. Er, fashion. Now, how are we gonna catch this Porygon? Because if you can't tell, I forgot to bring Swiper with me this time. A lot of my Pokemon are too strong to actually fight these wild Pokemon without knocking them out. That's why I have Swiper in the first place. So I guess the best I can do is put it to sleep and hope and... Hypothetically or literally pray. Luckily, sleep is a pretty good status. Brings down the catch rate a significant amount. We should be fine. Oh, that reminds me. As I was gonna say, if you ever want to use a Porygon 2 in a Pokemon XD playthrough, this is probably your best shot. No Gen 4 Evolution, because it is a Gen 3 game, but do remember that according to the description of the Evil Light in XG, you can give an Evil Light to Pokemon that technically don't have an Evolution, but do get an Evolution in the 4th generation. 
including Porygon 2. Which, considering like the whole gimmick with the evolutions that it just gets a different stat spread, that can be an interesting concept to play around with, just a whole extra tanky Porygon 2. Now, I'm kind of getting a sense of deja vu, because I kind of feel like I've caught this one before, but I guess I decided to leave this footage in because, as you can see, without Swiper, we kind of struggle with catching wild Pokémon quite a bit more than I was expecting. There goes the only Pokémon that I probably have on this team that can actually do damage without knocking out the wild Pokémon completely. Well, hopefully, like, the quarter of health that we chipped away, eighth of health that we chip away off this thing will be enough in combination with Sweep to just catch the Pokémon and move on. Eh, surely it'll be enough. That said, no need to go through all the time of selecting the Pokeball and throwing the Pokeball. Let's just see if this Pokeball works. Don't mind my lack of confidence in using a natural Pokeball. We caught it. That's what matters in the end. Now, what else are we lucky to find? Oh, this isn't quite a Pokespot thing. Yeah, from the experience I was having in Area 3, Trying to raise up Dratini with Mount Battle wasn't quite working to my favor, so I decided to try putting in the daycare instead. Plus, it gave me the option to have Torkoal for Area 4, which you have or will see really works to my favor overall. Also, hey! New Pokémon! I didn't say it's an exciting Pokémon, but it sure is a new Pokéspot encounter. While I'm thinking of it, would have been better to say this at the beginning of the video, but better late than never. This would be the video where I finally show off doing trades with Dunk King. If you remember from original XD, and I do believe I, it came up in XG as well, but there are three special trades you can do with him if you catch the rarest Pokémon of each Pokéspot. And since we picked up a second Dragonair, and I actually remembered that that feature exists, I think today would be a good day as any to actually finally do those trades. I do recall it being something done more towards the end of the video though, so that's worth looking into. Also, the other major thing that happens is that I finally get around to purifying all the Shadow Pokemon that I won't be using going to the next plot forward, so if you're the type of person that enjoys my genuine reactions to the Pokemon purifying and seeing what moves we get out of them, stay tuned. I even made sure to record live commentary specifically for that section, so... <laughs> yeah, that's basically was my reaction seeing that thing for the first time. Completely forgot about duking and even bringing it up. Luckily, we got Swiper on our side, and oh right, it's a rock type and we aren't that crazy overleveled. At least Swiper isn't so overleveled that a spell spike will actually do anything, and he's the one that actually matters. Everyone else being overleveled is actually the problem. I think it'll be okay though, we've been in plenty of situations where we can damage the Pokemon and just using Spore once and then throwing Pokeball will be fine. Jack Kate, no, no. Bad, bad, stay away, you're supposed to use Spore, not literally any attack. I don't care if you think it's neutral and rock types are defensive. It is not fine. You one hit KO'd it. You fool. So yeah. That's specifically why I said we'd be trading Dratini today. Cause I could have sworn I saw a chancy, but I definitely didn't have one in the box and spoilers, I don't reset to try to get that Aerodactyl again. I don't even know why. I think past me just had too much pride. And it's like, if I couldn't get in first shot, I will just grind it out until it comes up again. And why did I think that was a good idea? Who knows? Who cares? It's far too late at this point. At least we got our 20 million Ponia. Speaking of disappointments with Pokespot encounters, hey! Guess what everyone, it's an Abra! Guess what Abras do? If you thought the mod would be kind and adjust its move pool because of the way Pokespots work in this game, 
Well, I ain't gonna even chance it. Let's just use the Great Ball. Ultra Ball is probably overkill. But I'm not even gonna chance to teleport. Let's just catch it. And be on the safe side. That is not catching the Pokemon. Yeah, teleport still works like that in this game. Let's just knock out the spell sprout. I've caught Bell Sprout already. I don't care about it anymore. Honestly, if I'm gonna be honest with you all, I wasn't intentionally knocking it out, but I didn't really even care about the risk at that point, so I don't know if it counts as intentionally knocking it out or not. Um, let me see if I can at least make up for it by catching this Kabuto. It's low health, it's a great ball, we should be fine. It'd be nice to actually catch something after all the intentional and unintentional flubs that we've had so far. Again, not too special because we have one already, but... Oh, no, I was wrong. This was a 20 million polia that we've caught. Anyways, as promised, if you actually catch one of the rare Pokemon that King wants, and don't just accidentally knock it out because your ego's too big, like someone won't name, then you can trade them to Duking for, well, a Pokemon Return. But what Pokemon is it? I guess I'll have to dig out that your team from the PC before we can see. And no worries, Nayla is still in the day here, just a completely different Dratini. So, let's see what the big deal- oh, Crokina! I'm sure I'll find out eventually on my own, but I'm gonna take a wild guess and assume that the other two also are traded for Johto starters. And if so, if you've wanted to use Jogo Starter on your XD team but didn't want to play for all of Mount Battle, and considering the Pokemon are so high in level in Mount Battle, you wouldn't be able to get it until endgame anyways, well, there you go. It doesn't have that Hydro Cannon, but I think that's a fair trade to actually be able to use it in the main game. Makes me wonder what the actual Mount Battle reward is now. I'll look into it before the end of this playthrough, just not today. I've really been enjoying doing Mount Battle the way I've been doing because it doubles its training for when my Pokemon get too low in level for the main adventure. So maybe they just flat out took out the reward for doing all of Mount Battle in one sitting, which is something I will not complain about. But again, I'll look into it another time. For now, we have Shadow Pokemon that have been waiting to purify for literal months. Let's finally set their hearts free. But first, a quick disclaimer. Apologies in advance, the commentary audio quality is not going to be as good. I accidentally forgot to record the commentary and game audio separate, and I had the AC running because I was under the impression that I could just edit that background noise off. It's not too terrible, but it is noticeable, uh, so I just wanted to apologize for that real quick. Onwards with the show. Alright. Honestly, with all the shenanigans and other stuff that's been going on off screen. Let's purify some shadow Pokemon. They've been sitting around waiting to be purified for so long as it is. And I think I figured out the shadow Pokemon that I want to bring into the next part. So, let's go with it. Also, in case you can tell, I've been messing around with the purification chamber. And with all the wild Pokemon I've been catching from Pokespots, I'm so close yet so far and completing every single purification chamber. Beyond that though... Pardon any background noise, I'm kinda of thinking of cutting this all together. I just wanna have a recording going just in case something interesting comes up in the recording. <laughs> like this. Of course they added Aurora Veil in this game. It is... the whole stick of the XG mod. Yeah, cause you never know when we're going to learn a random move that I didn't see coming, no matter how obviously coming it was. And who knows, maybe I'll actually be excited for it. Case in point, I didn't even realize Magmar could learn that move. So all used to being Lucario's move thing, but then again, it's been a long time since I used the Magmar. So who knows, it might have been an updated move. 
in like a more modern generation of Pokemon. I mean, I know a lot of Pokemon besides Lucario, Scott, and Aurora Spears since Lucario and Aurora Spears been introduced. But I did not think Magmar was one of those Pokemon for whatever reason. Shadow Bone. A signature move of a Lone Marowak, so not too shocked. Get Double Edge. I don't remember the ability of it, but if it's rock, if it's not Rockhead, then that's kind of underwhelming. I mean, Double Edge is strong, but I'm typically not going for recoil moves unless we actually get something real good out of it. All right, last but not least. Not gonna lie, that makes me want to play around with Pidgeot even more, but my god, my team is pretty filled, and I already have a really good <laughs> flying type that I don't want to ditch. Disable is weird. Not... I don't even know really weird to give a Pidgeot Disable. I think we actually gotta go in and look at some of these moves a little more closely, because I was not expecting a Rare Spear out of the Pidgeot. God... If only I didn't already dedicate myself to Talon Swift. For one, you have Lightning Rod, not Double Edge. I mean, it is a strong move, especially for this point in the game, but I'm not a big fan of Recoil with no catch to it. Oh yeah, and you have no guard. Which is actually kind of counterintuitive when you're with a move that never misses. But hey, it is a strong move that never misses. And especially since they updated the accuracy of Disable to 100%. There's a single slightly inaccurate move on this move pool. Okay, maybe, yeah, maybe this Pidgeot isn't as amazing as I thought. It just doesn't matter because we already have the best flying type ever on our side. It, it feels so surreal to be saying that about a Swallow when Pidgeot was always my old G bird growing up. We've had just so many good times with Talon Swift though that it would be impossible for me to say goodbye to him now. Especially like with all the fun Gale Wind shenanigans. Oh yeah, I never mentioned it, but. I accidentally bought a PP up because I thought I had I, I had some spare money and I didn't realize I had like three in the PC already. So I decided just to instead of hoard them for the entire game, use them up. So we got two on swell because I I'm I, I'm hoping that with extreme speed being a more common thing that we'd be able to use like with more power points on extreme speed, I won't be so hesitant to not use it. And Spore is now bumped up to an A power point. Like 6 was probably plenty, but it says I had power up point up to spare. And Spore is such a good move. Why not? Also, the entire team's got a makeover, but you've probably already seen that, so I won't be redundant. All that said though. I think we're ready to finally progress the plot after so many weeks of being on hiatus with recording and doing miscellaneous things in the background and mount battle training. I think it's finally time. So yeah, all of this was recorded when I was all set and go. I was like, okay, it's been several months of just doing Mountain Battle and filler content, I am ready to progress the plot. Wait, how do I progress the plot? And I probably spent a solid two hours running around the entire world checking every map point multiple times to try to get another email to appear. <sighs> so that I could finally go to the outskirts stance. If you want to figure out what actually happened and why I feel so annoyed at this point of the commentary. Oh, stay tuned, friends. The whole ordeal, the whole adventure we had 
after I finally decided to be done with Mount Battle and try to progress the plot. Oh, is a journey. It is a certainly an adventure. Like trying to catch these wild Pokemon when your entire team is too strong to actually chip away their damage because you forget your false swiper in the PC because you fought you're actually getting you thought that this is not gonna be the main thing you do today. That your main focus was gonna be playing the video game, experiencing a story. Oh, just little stuff like that. Caught the numbo for what that's worth. I don't know if we got a numbo already. So, in my quest to find literally any new dialogue that could possibly trigger the flag to start the next part of the plot, stumbled into that scene with Justy. And also another wild Pokemon. It's a Gligar. We've seen it before, so I'm just gonna use this opportunity to do my outro. Thank you all for tuning in this Thank you all for tuning in for this edition of Pokemon XG Next Gen. Now I'm going to talk about next episode because I don't know when this will go up. And I feel like I've jinxed <laughs> what will happen in the next episode several times in this recording session alone. So that's it for me. Let's just appreciate the nickname I give this thing. It kind of reflects my mood of my state of mind at this particular time. Take care.